People get very nervous before interviews. It's totally normal. But there are some things that you can focus on to help you to be more confident. Today I'm going to give some tips on how to do a good ESL Skype interview. Most people worry about Skype interviews. They are nervous because they can't show their normal selves. They only have this image and their voice to land the job. But in some aspects, it's also easier because you don't have to go to the physical location and people can see you. So you've got this one chance to actually show your personality, to show your ability and to do that with confidence. I feel people focus on the wrong things though. A lot of people are so nervous about the interview that they study many questions about ESL and teaching. When in fact, they should only focus on a few and be more relaxed during the interview. If you're more relaxed, it's easier for you to respond well to the questions. Don't focus on too many questions. Don't try and make a list of questions and memorize some words and phrases that you can use. That'll make you even more stressed. Think about what people want in interviews. What do people really want to see in an interview? They want to know that you're a capable teacher and they want to know that you are approachable. You're socially not awkward and it's, you're easy to get along with. That's all you have to do. You just have to show them, listen, I can do the job. You can trust me and I won't be weird. I won't, you can trust me with your students, be it young students or university students. Just keep those in mind. Listen, um, they don't want too much. You've already landed the interview. Don't overthink it. I think 90% of people that don't get those jobs from Skype interviews are people that worry too much and stress too much before the big interview and they over prepare or they under prepare. They only have to prepare four questions. Otherwise, they just need to be calm, reasonable and friendly. Very simple, actually. So first, what do they want? They want to know that you are a confident teacher. You are able to do the job. Second, they want to know that you are a social person. They can trust you to take care of the students and to interact with co-workers. They don't have to worry about you being antisocial or have some weird tics. That is what the Skype interview is. They just want to hear your voice. How do you pronounce certain things? Um, and what is your general demeanor? Let's focus on the basics first. What are you going to wear? Going to look professional, suit and tie. Uh, I'm not wearing a blazer. It's a bit hot for that. Um, also, if, if you're a lady, you're going to dress professionally. Some people have the idea of not wearing pants during a Skype interview. <laughs> Rather not do that. That's just something that's going to be in the back of your head the whole time. Don't be too casual. This is not your friend that you're FaceTiming. This is, this is for an interview and they want to see how professional you are, so take it seriously. Background. Uh, a clean background is simple, not messy. Try and be somewhere where it's quiet, where you aren't going to be disturbed by anyone else. There are only four questions you need to prepare for an ESL Skype interview. If you prepare too much, you're going to get more and more nervous trying to remember everything and trying to say the right thing. What's better is just to come off as a normal human being answering the questions. So there are four questions I want you to prepare. First, Describe yourself. This is your opportunity to say who you are, where you're from, what experience do you have, what's your personality, what are your goals going forward. This interview that I'm doing today is for a summer class, so it's not a permanent position. So in that case, I would have also prepared a fifth question. Why do you want to join this school? So you might have to look up some things about the school or find some reasons why you want to join it. Number two, class management. How do you manage your classes? They want to see someone who's able to control the class and they, can, they don't have to worry about managing the class for you if there are issues. People just want someone that they can trust and get along with. That's it. Trust and get along with. 
So if you can show that you've got classroom management skills, you can even um, have a few examples that you can give where you had a problem with a student and you solved it. Number three, what is your teaching methodology? How do you believe people learn? And how will you teach ESL? It's very important to bring up the activities you're going to do, that you want students to work in groups, that you want them to do a lot of speaking, you want them to have fun. Most ESL schools, um, if, if you're not going to work for a public school and you're not going to work for a university, if you're going to work for an academy, they want someone that will make learning fun for the students. Even if you're a public school teacher or a university lecturer, you want to have an element of enjoyment in your class because you don't want students to come to your class and be bored. So have group activities, pure activities, have projects that they can do, make learning fun. And you're going to put that in your answer. You can also have a show that you've got a command of the subject and you also know some modern ESL teaching methods. Number four, strengths and weaknesses. What makes you a good teacher? Why should you have this job? Very important. You can say, I've got a good personality. I get along with the students. I've got a great ability. I've got a lot of experience. Anything that paints you in a good light. You want to show them your best self. If you can do that, maybe they'll ask you what are some weaknesses. You can mention a weakness. But then also in the same breath, you're going to start saying, well, this is how I'm turning it around or this is how I fixed that problem and I actually made it a strength. But don't finish on a negative. You want to show them that you're a positive person and you've got only got great qualities. Basically, five questions I want you to ask. Number one, tell me about yourself. This is where you talk about your experience and your personality, where you come from. Two, classroom management. They want someone that they can trust, can control the classroom. Three, teaching methodology. How do students learn and how will you teach them? Four, what are your strengths? What makes you the best possible person for this job? And then number five, if you're going for a full-time job, you should say, why do you want this job? So once you've prepared those five questions, you're going to go into it and I want you to be calm and confident because they don't want someone weird. I mean, uh, that's a reality of teaching ESL is a lot of people leave their hometowns and their countries to go and teach ESL abroad. And then you do find some people that aren't that good with children or that aren't that good socially and the last thing a company wants or a school wants is to have someone that is antisocial that doesn't really connect well with the students. So calm, confident, friendly. That's who you are. Don't worry about any other questions. Just wing them. Smile, give a simple answer and then answer it. Okay, next the background. Uh, just a simple background is fine. If, if you only have a wall behind you, that's good. Uh, don't have any distractions or noises anywhere so that you can only focus on this. Even for someone like myself, uh, before the interview, I can also get nervous. So what you can do is you can put on some um, meditation music and just focus on your breathing. And then once the interview starts, just remember, calm, confident, friendly. That's all they want. You don't have to show them the world. You don't have to act things out. You can just show them, I'm a friendly person. I'm calm, I'm confident. I can do this job for you and I won't make things weird. The most important thing you can do to prepare for an ESL Skype interview is to have a practice interview with a friend. This is great because First, you can see that everything is working, your sound's working, you can see what you look like, and you can practice answering these questions. Sometimes when you do that initial interview, you make mistakes or you phrase things the way you don't want to. So, uh, send those five questions to a friend, say, okay, please ask me these questions. If you can think of any other questions, please ask them so I can practice it, and it works fantastically. So many people go into it and they think, oh, you know what, this is just a one-time thing. They go in and they want to be the pinch hitter that hits it out of the ballpark with that first swing. Totally wrong. 
How many hours does that pinch hitter stand in the batting cage at swinging? One, two, three, four. Thousands of balls. Yet we only see them going out and swinging once. And that's a wrong mentality to have in everything in life. Yes, it does feel awkward seeing yourself or videotaping yourself. But the results speak for themselves. If you watch yourself doing presentations, you can pick up on the things that you are doing wrong and you can improve the things that you are doing right too. If you videotape yourself giving class, you can see, oh, I'm, I'm, my body looks this way. I've got these ticks. I say this word a lot. For myself, I say so and well. I've got these interjections that I put in to give me time to think. Ums. If you watch yourself doing these things, you can cut out 90% of the mistakes. And it's the same for interviews. If you videotape yourself doing an interview, you practice with your friends, you can see all the things you're doing wrong, and then you've got a better chance of hitting that ball out of the park. Time for the real life video. I haven't done an interview in a while, so I'm a bit rusty, but I'm going to show you how I prepared uh, a Skype interview with my dad before the real interview, and I'm also going to show you the real life demo and interview. Okay, let's take a look. <laughs> 